pardon me, ending the video a little bit too early last time. Um, but don't worry, you didn't miss anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, load some products from the database. So that's going to be the next step. Uh, I like to keep all of my database related stuff in a folder called DB for database. You don't have to call it that, that's just what I like to call it. Uh, and inside here, I'm going to create a connection.js file. Uh, similar theme, this doesn't have to be called connection.js, I just like to call it that. Uh, because the purpose of it is going to be to connect to my MongoDB database. Its whole job is just to set up the connection to that database. The first thing I need to do is I need to install a node package called Mongoose. And Mongoose, uh, Notice that it has Mongo in there. Its whole job is just to communicate to MongoDB. It's sort of the middleman between Express and MongoDB. So I've installed it, and now if I look in here, I should be able to see Mongoose somewhere in here. There it is, Mongoose. All right, so what I'm actually going to do with it is I'm going to require it inside this connection.js file. I'm going to require Mongoose. And then my next step is I just want to make sure I can connect to my database. MongoDB, localhost, I'm gonna call it tag anything. All right, now I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is the proper syntax. So what I'm gonna do to check is I'm just going to run uh, node db slash connection js and see whether or not that throws any errors. If it doesn't, I'm going to assume I'm good. All right, so this did throw an error, but I think I'm still good. This error is saying econ refused, that is connection refused. That means it's trying to connect to MongoDB, but it can't. In order to do that, I need to run something else in terminal called mongod. Not to be confused with mongo, this is mongod. Now if I go back and try to rerun this file, let's see if that worked. All right, I'm not getting any errors, so I'm going to assume that it worked just fine. So I'm going to keep on going along with this and set up the rest of my database. Uh, let's see. So my database is going to have two different tables, if you will, inside it. In Mongo, they're called uh, documents. It's going to have two different document collections inside it. The first one is going to be products. The other one's going to be tags. I'll start off with products. So I'm going to define the schema for products. That is, the different fields that a product is going to have. Uh, let's see, I'll keep it simple to begin with. I'll just say each product has a name. And I'm not even gonna worry about tags yet. I'll just begin with that. Okay, so I've defined the schema for it. Now I need to tell Mongoose to use that as a model. So I'm gonna tell it to take that schema I just defined and define it uh, excuse me, use it as a model called product. Uh, and I'm going to use this product name a lot in the future, and you'll see why it's important later on. Uh, so I'm going to stop there again and just make sure everything is working to this point. So I'm still not getting any errors, so I'm going to continue to assume that everything is working just fine. Let's see. Okay, that should be all I need to do with this connection file for now. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is seed my, da uh, seed my database. That is, put some sort of dummy starter data inside my database. Uh, to do this, I'm going to create a seeds.json file. And that is going to contain all of this dummy data right here. I'm just going to remove all that and I'm gonna put it inside seeds JSON. Uh, notice that these are highlighted right here, which means Adam is telling me something is wrong. So that means my JSON is incorrect for some reason. So I'm gonna to go to JSON lint and see if it'll tell me what. So the first thing is, uh, well, it seems to have copied it. No, well, no, I copied it correctly. Uh, so it's telling me it's expecting a string. Eh, I don't really know what's going on there, but just by virtue of having done this a lot, I know the problem is that in a raw JSON file, all of these different keys, all these different property names need to be in quotes. So if I fix that, copy and paste it back in here, and then validate it again, I can see that I am all good to go. So now I have a JSON file, and now I have a connection to Mongo. Now what I want to do is get that JSON file into my database effectively. So I'm going to create a new file called cdb.js. And the purpose of this is going to be to load that JSON file and then put its contents into the database. Uh, 
In order to do this, it needs to first connect to my database. I'm not going to do a mongoose.connect again because I already have a connection defined in here. Instead, what I'm going to have it do is load this connection file. I put a dot slash in here because this is telling it to load a local file. Whenever you want to load a file, you use dot slash. If you don't use dot slash, it's going to look inside the node modules folder for a package called connection. I don't have a package called connection, I have a file called connection. So I'm using dot slash. Uh, you can or cannot put the dot js at the end. It's optional, it's up to you. Um, I'm not going to, just because it's three fewer characters to write. All right, so I want this to take that connection file. I also want it to load up that uh, seed data I created. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, dot slash seeds. Require works with both dot js and dot json file extensions. The next thing I need to do is call up that product model I defined. So I can call it by getting mongoose.model product. This is just like what I did in the connection file. The difference is if it has two arguments in here, it's going to define that model. If it has one argument, as in here, it's going to load that model. It's going to assume it's already been defined and it's going to load it. And now uh, the first thing I'm going to do, well, here, I should be able to just do product.create seed data dot then process.exit. All right, so you could just stop here, um, but I'll tell you why I'm not just stopping there in a minute. All right, so now I'm going to try to run this cdb file, and hopefully it'll see my database, but we'll find out. So I get this mongoose.model is not a function thing right here. Uh, and I'm assuming that the problem is that I'm requiring this connection file, but I haven't told the connection file what should come out of it. That is, I'm requiring it, but when someone requires it, I haven't said what they should be actually getting out of this file. When you require something, you always need to have a module.exports somewhere in there. Module.exports is basically the equivalent of return in a JavaScript function. It says what should come out of this file. Module.exports is the opposite of require. Require says what file it should load. Module.exports is saying what should go out of that file when it's loaded. Now I think this should work just fine. All right, so uh, I didn't get any errors, so I'm still gonna take that as a good sign. Now let me, let me talk about why I have this dot then and the process dot exit. So if I get rid of that, I still don't get any errors, but my app appears to just be sort of hanging right here. Process is a special global variable inside an Express app that ha sort of refers to the entire instance of the app running. Process.exit tells the app to stop running. Uh, the reason I have that dot then in there is because if I just did process.exit right here, uh, it wouldn't necessarily, it might stop the app before it's done seeding my database. JavaScript happens very fast, and this process of putting stuff into the database, this dot create, it takes just a little bit of time, it takes just a few milliseconds, but JavaScript's not gonna wait for it to finish before it goes on to this next line. So this takes probably about three milliseconds, but there's nothing telling JavaScript to wait those three milliseconds to stop the app. What will tell it to wait those three milliseconds is this dot then, that's saying, create all of this seed data and then close the app. So now if I run this again, now it closes it. To make sure everything worked, I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm gonna type Mongo. So not Mongod, but just Mongo. If I go in here, I should be able to connect to this database I defined. I believe I called it, let's see, I called it tag anything. I should be able to type use tag anything and then if I show collections in here, it should show me products. Uh, well, you know, I actually have a couple other things left over from when I made this before, um, but that's okay. Let's just see what's inside products. Hopefully I'll see product one, two, three, and four. And I do, product one, two, three, four. I see them a couple times because I've seeded this database several times, but it appears to be working.
So this is good. I can close Mongo now, but I still need to leave MonGod running. Okay, so I have a way of seeding things into the database. Uh, and this is pretty good, but uh, I would like it every time I seed the database to also remove any of the products that are currently in there. So I'm going to add product.remove.then function. And then I'm going to take this whole create and put it inside there. So I'm telling it to first remove all the products, then create all the products, then exit the app. And so now when I run this, looks like the same thing, but if I run Mongo and I use tag anything, and I look at all the products, I should only see four, and I do. So this seems to be working exactly the way I wanted. So that's great. Uh, the very last step in here is going to take that data from the database and make it show up at this slash API slash products route. So to do that, I'm going to first require that connection I made. So I'm going to do require dot slash because it's a file inside the DB folder, inside connection. And I need to define that model. So that's product equals mongoose.model product. And then in here, first I'm going to find all of the products. So that should load them all from the database. And then I'm going to take what it loaded from the database. So it's going to take all the products from the database and I'm going to render those as JSON. And if this worked correctly, I should be able to go to slash API slash products and see products one through four. And there they are. And in turn, if I go to the main page of my app, I should see products one through four. Just to make sure this is really working, I'm going to add one additional, eh, actually, you know what, four is enough. I'll take one away, uh, reseed my database, and then I predict that when I reload this page, I'll only see three products. There we go. So that data is going from my seed file into the database, and then once it's in the database, it's going from the database to my connection.js file to my index.js file. So I'm going from connection to index.js to Angular, and it's loading it here with this dot .query method to my products index view. There it is. So now I have a functioning full stack connection to my database, which is more than enough for a good commit. So I'm going to add commit, uh, let's see, I'll say database products rendered on front end. And I'll push that up. 